Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. We're gonna talk about the Nikon Z8 mirrorless camera and its incredible capabilities for video and still with commercial fashion photographer and filmmaker Dixie Dixon out of Dallas, Texas. We have her here with us today. She shot some incredible stills on this shoot as well as a beautiful piece about soulmates. So let's run this video so you can see the work that she's done. I wondered if my life could be a movie I'd play myself the main lead It would be a coming of age story And a quarter of the way through I met you in our meet queue And halfway in I realized I didn't know Remember the names and faces I loved Who always believed in who I'd become The highs and the lows, the hellos and goodbyes That made up the scenes of this beautiful life The lights will come on, I know it's almost time Just let me sit through the end credits Dixie, that was quite remarkable, so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here for this amazing camera. Isn't this great? We've I'm done this to... many times, right? Yes, and, we have. Uh, it's yes, just another, uh, just a landmark moment in our careers together, working together. That's the best part of all this. I get to work with you. Absolutely. And um, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, the film we just saw. And where does it all start for you? You know, we, we, we call you up, we say, here's a Z8. Mm -hmm. This is what we need you to consider uh, in the way of features yeah. and how uh, we're looking to see you use the camera and really stress test it and at the same time create a beautiful piece. Talk a little bit about the Absolutely. creative that we've just seen. Absolutely. You know, this shoot in particular was very challenging. Um, one of the biggest parts of it was, you know, you guys call with this amazing opportunity and it's, this is like a dream project for a photographer. I was so excited to get that phone call um, about the project and, you know, I was able to, you know, with working with a big crew, you have to work around schedules and the only scheduling that was, that was workable was five days after you gave me that phone call. So we had to really, you know, Put, we, we hustled, we, we hustled yep. well and so yeah we put it together in five days and it was a four-day shoot and what the biggest part of it I think you know I had all these different capabilities that I wanted to showcase from low light to image quality uh, to the ability to create beautiful cinematic film and video so there's a lot of different things a lot of different layers it was sort of like a shoot of a shoot of a shoot essentially you know you have the behind the scenes of the creation of it as well as the stills and the video and um, gosh, what I love most about it was that I was able to pick it up and instantly just get in my zone and start shooting without having to, you know, try to figure out the layout of the buttons. Everything was the same. You know, I've been shooting the Z9 for a year and a half and switching over to the Z8. It was completely seamless. I could get into my zone and start shooting and it was like instantly, it felt so natural. I mean, this, this camera will be my workhorse. I, I noticed that. I noticed that while we were on set, I handed you the camera. I expected you to come back with a bunch of questions, but you didn't. You went right to work. <laughs> I did. Um, talk about, you used the word soulmates to describe this piece. Yes. Um, talk about what that means to you and what, mm -hmm. you know, set this up for us. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I had three different couples who I had casted. And this whole film, the overarching theme that I wanted to showcase was basically soulmates coming together in different lifetimes. And you know, you've got the vintage Versailles type of looks with this actual real couple. So this particular couple I, I photographed and shot, basically they were already a couple and I figured it out through Instagram. I was looking through there and I was looking for the male model for the female and I noticed that she was with this other model from the same agency. I was like, oh, let's definitely cast them. So it was amazing because they already had instant chemistry. There was no awkwardness on set. Um, so they were in that beautiful high fashion scenario. And then you move on to the train 
Lane series with this other beautiful couple. They actually weren't a real couple, but they had great chemistry. They did. They, they really did. did. They connected very well on set. Yeah. But so that's that, part of your approach to picking the models as yes, well, right? Personality. Definitely. So they came together really well. And then the third couple was a really good friend of mine, Landry, amazing model. And we had a great uh, male model as well. And they came together for the ranch scenario. So that was more the modern um, soulmate feature of the film. And then what tied it all together was this the symbolism that came through in, within each of the couple's scenes. And I used a watch as well as a, a heart-shaped necklace or a locket. And you'll see that come together w between each of the couples. So it's almost like that was passed down in generations. So it kind of all comes together in this beautiful film because I'm always fascinated with soulmates. I think that's a really beautiful thing to get to capture. And, and you still see the fashion in the wardrobe, but it also has that overarching abstract theme. So within the project, we say, you know, you had to shoot a video, a short mm -hmm. film, as well as the stills. Talk yeah. about how you use the Z8 mm -hmm. and how you made this creative come to life with this new camera. Yeah, absolutely. This camera is exceptional for folks that are trying to shoot both video and stills in the same production. I mean, it's amazing we can, when you can just focus on one or the other, but today there's so much content that is needed when I'm shooting fashion campaigns and things like that. And especially for this particular production, we needed stills and video of all the scenarios. And so the way that I approached it is we would light for video. So we had constant light sources throughout the whole production. So that means we only have to light once. And then we go into shooting, I shoot stills first. And so we nail the still shots. I'll shoot basically a wide shot and then I'll move in closer. And then we'll move on to video and we'll get the different video shots, um, horizontal, vertical, um, slow motion, you know, 24, uh, just all the different scenarios that we need for every single shot. And then that all comes together and then we go into the editing. Mm -hmm. So, but this camera is, is exceptionally incredible for fashion photography, really any kind of photographer if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Did you feel it was a struggle to go from still to video and back and no. forth or describe what that feeling is like? No, I mean, if you look at this body style, I mean, it's made for filmmaking. It's so lightweight, especially when you're using like a white angle lens or something like that that's super light you put it on a gimbal you can instantly start shooting even if you're not shooting with a gimbal you can easily just switch it to video mode and you can have those settings auto set before you even go into the shoot for both stills and video separately and I think that that is huge so you know I love creating cinemagraphs and vertical video horizontal video it just this camera makes it so easy everything is so easy the way that you've laid out the the menus and the buttons, I mean, it just makes it incredibly easy for us to create. You mentioned using the Z9, the familiarity mm -hmm. between the two cameras is impeccable yes. because that muscle memory of being able mm -hmm. to use similar like cameras, but something a little bit smaller for the video world right. is ideal, I think, in, in the world you work in. And I mean, we've known each other for many years and you started off just in still yes. and you transitioned into film. Yes. Um, and, um, and I've watched this evolution in your career grow and it's, it's, it's quite amazing oh, to see where you. you've gone. And I love how you bring the romance to all of this. And, <laughs> you know, within this piece, that the genuine nature of the couple, it's a real couple, but you also brought that out in, you know, two people mm -hmm. like Landry and that gentleman that just hadn't met each other before yes. as well. So that takes a lot. But you take yeah. on the role of a little bit of everything, right? Mm -hmm. Camera operator, director. Yeah. You talk about this all the time, putting together a dream team. Talk mm -hmm. about other people on set and how you use them, other camera operators covering off different angles with yeah. the Z8. Uh, how did you put that all together? Absolutely. So we had basically three cameras running and I was doing stills obviously and then running another camera for video. We had another camera on a gimbal and then actually we had two other cameras on, on a gimbal. So you know we have all of our bases covered <laughs> essentially because we had to create not only the main fashion film but also the behind the scenes of the creation of right. the fashion film and the stills so it requires it kind of requires an army sometimes <laughs> we're going to get to see that bts yes. at the end so everybody can come behind the scenes with dixie mm -hmm. and I, I always feel like those pieces are almost as important as a production yeah. sometimes when it comes to showcasing not just the product mm -hmm. but the work you do that's actually educational so people get to see that behind the yes. scenes well if this is what dixie does then maybe this is what i should be doing Absolutely. Um, and I, what I love about that in those moments is hearing the comments from the other camera operators yes. like oh my god this autofocus is so fast I don't think I can do better than that or wow look yes. at the, the quality of the files when you mm -hmm. first start looking at this stuff 
and we'll get back to the Z8 and some of the other features and talk about lenses. Mm -hmm. What's the quality that you're seeing coming mm -hmm. out of the camera? Talk about color, talk a little bit about, you know, yeah. the quality of files for still mm -hmm. in video. Oh my gosh, the, the files are phenomenal. I have a, a retoucher that I send a lot of my work to and he said that he has not seen a file as sharp and as perfect right out of the camera as he has seen on the Z8. And it's just mind blowing how perfect they are right out, the, right out of the gate, like even without any retouching, without anything. So yeah, I mean, I think the secret sauce between this new Z8 the sharpness and these new lenses, like the 8512, which I use all the time. I'm obsessed with that lens. I know. <laughs> I feel that so, one too. Yes, yep. absolutely. I think, I mean, there's just nothing better. The way that it renders skin tones, that's that's my big thing as a fashion photographer. I want it to, to render skin tones and color. You know, when you're capturing wardrobe and things for fashion clients, that has to be spot on and this camera nails it every every single time. Listen, you we, we and I have been doing crazy. this for a very long time, and yeah. I, I kind of can almost say some of the things that you have said <laughs> along the way. Mm -hmm. We talk about the customizability of the camera so you yes. can contour it to the way you, you like to shoot, mm -hmm. the controls, but pick that camera up again, because yeah. I love seeing it in your hands. Yeah. And when you first picked this up, I know you were in shoot mode, but there's mm -hmm. anything that stood out about the mm -hmm. camera that just really impressed you, some wow feature. Ooh. I, I mean, know, a little bit of everything, right? A little bit of everything, but the eye autofocus. Mm. I mean, I'm just, it's mind blowing how good it is, especially at the, with the 85.12 and you're shooting at 1.2. I used to be scared to shoot at 1.2 because I would be really afraid that I would miss focus just a little bit. Uh, but this new eye autofocus, I mean, you can auto set it and it's just, I can be so candid with my subjects. I can just move around a lot. The camera is auto focusing to the eyes instantly. I don't have to do any extra work because as a fashion photographer, I used to compose first and then I would move my focus point to the eye and then I would take the shot. And that, that wastes a lot of time. Like I'm almost missing moments having to do that working with like Plus a you're DSLR. you're disconnecting with that one thing that takes you right. to your subject through the lens. Exactly, like this makes it so I can be completely candid with my subjects as I shoot. And I mean, that's life changing. I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's, you can really capture that instant connection and focus on that connection 100% of the time because the camera is doing all of that work for you. And as a fashion photographer, that's, that's a game changer. I, I think that's the most important thing. The less you can concentrate on setting settings on a camera, yes. touching the camera, the more mm -hmm. you concentrate on what you're doing outside the camera and, exactly. and creating with it. So you talk about autofocus mm -hmm. for still photography. It's funny too, because we talk about frame rate. You think mm -hmm. that you, know, you wouldn't use continuous firing, but you do that too. So yes. 20 frames per second actually works in your favor mm -hmm. for those little moments in between the moments right. that you're shooting. But talk about the autofocus in the way of video mm -hmm. and how do you use it? Absolutely. You know, it, it's amazing how with video you can change the speed of the rack focus and so it can create even more cinematic nature to your videos and I mean that's incredible. I utilize the slow motion video primarily in fashion photography because you really capture the essence of the wardrobe and the clothes and the mood and everything so we shot slow motion the entire time um, you know using that 60 and 120 um, frames per second is just incredible for video and it just it looks beautiful it looks cinematic and then not only that you can also take stills from the video footage at 33 megapixels and it looks beautiful so even if you didn't capture something on stills and you're shooting video you can take those stills and they look amazing and you look at the the, the notion of what you mentioned color mm -hmm. skin tone things yes. like that just as powerful on the video. video side as it mm -hmm. would be on the still side exactly and how does that as, as an artist i mean that kind of confidence mm -hmm. i think the word is confidence mm -hmm. how does that make you feel you feel yeah that? absolutely you feel fully confident i mean even when i'm shooting because I, I like to put a lot of things in front of the lens you know, on the sides, you know, add some foreground bokeh and just kind of really getting creative. This camera focuses through that. It's just incredible, the capabilities of this camera. You talk about bokeh. Talk about your mm -hmm. lens selection, the Zenicor yes. lenses that you used on the shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I used, you know, I'm primarily a prime shooter. I love the good prime lenses. I've just always gravitated towards those. Just the bokeh on those are just incredible. And, you know, I, the 85 just come out. And so obviously I had to use that lens. I think I probably used that 80% of this campaign. And then I also used the new 105 as well as the 3518. So those were I, the basic three lenses that I use. I didn't even use a 70 to 200 or anything like that. I just love these primes for fashion. And you know, it's just incredible, just the secret sauce, like I said, 
with the image quality that comes through when you use the Z8 with these new amazing Nikkor lenses. It's beautiful. From couple to couple to couple, you're indoors at a house that looks like it's in Versailles, right? Yes. And we move then to uh, an antique train station, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and then you go out with, uh, you know, the field, like a field safari type of, yes. of scenario. Mm -hmm. Speak to each of those transitions mm -hmm. and how you work the camera into those, or yeah. again, is that not something that became an issue? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny, when you're, when you have a camera that is ergonomically perfect, I mean, it feels so good and it's just so easy to shoot with. I wasn't even thinking about the camera as much when I was photographing because I was so in the zone. And I think that's really a test to how great this camera is that I'm really able to focus on exactly what I'm doing as opposed to trying to find something in a menu or trying to like switch the autofocus. Uh, but yeah, we, we moved through each of those scenarios pretty seamlessly. We started out at that Versailles house and it's just crazy because I mean you 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 know walked into that situation it looks like just a normal house in a neighborhood and you go inside of it and then there's just all this interesting architecture and colors and um, you know the wardrobe stylist brought some amazing wardrobe that was complementary to the colors I like to use a lot of complementary colors in my work like yellow and blue and um, so you'll see that wardrobe come to life and the way that this camera renders that color I mean just with fashion photography it's just striking I, I'm, I'm a little beautiful. shocked though that you didn't incorporate me into your video this <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you do with this, but you know, I was a little Dang sad it. that I wasn't like a background person, an extra. Aww. I mean, I, I wanted to be a part of it. That's I terrible. felt like I was in another world. It was pretty funny. <laughs> you're driving down side streets, and all of a sudden, you're in Versailles, and yes. you know, going out to the uh, horse farms. I mean, that yes. was really amazing when we what did the I? outdoor stuff. Yeah. Yes, the in the poodle. The poodle shot. Oh, the poodle, I know. <laughs> you know, and that's some of the challenges you face. I yes. mean, you have an animal on set, and the animal is one animal. You don't have multiple animals. Yes. The animal is, didn't exactly do what you wanted it no. to do in the moment <laughs> sitting up next to your main character, your right. female, right? right? What happens in that moment? Oh, my gosh. You could probably see the stress on my face when that was all happening because <laughs> we, we didn't have a backup poodle. And this poodle got, you know, trimmed perfectly, you know, the poodle cut and everything. And uh, so I wanted it to sit in the chair. It's like a heart-shaped chair next to the model. Like they were each having tea. And that poodle was not having it. It was not sitting in that chair. Um, so we kind of come up with a plan B. You know, I'm shooting really fast. I have this on continuous. This is when you need the continuous setting, you know, shooting 20 frames per second because you just never know what shot is gonna turn out with the poodle cooperating, essentially. So we ended up adding a, another like long couch. And so the poodle could just lounge on the couch and it liked sitting there. <laughs> so I shoot a ton of frames of that and ended up working good. It was amazing how the crew came together creative on the fly and somebody said hey bring the couch in which yes. I want you to know I was thinking that first I just didn't say it out loud yes uh, but in my heart it was my idea <laughs> um, but you thought moving the dog into another mm -hmm. position helped work and, and it helped make that scene work so much better and right. not only did it play perfectly for the video mm -hmm. it was a great still that's come out of this as well right. um, and exactly. uh, certainly your model was gorgeous mm -hmm. as well so I think she those was. things played and the set was done right and mm -hmm. I don't think people uh, see a lot of that and that's what they're gonna see in the yeah. BTS of all these little things that come together right. between the lighting and between the setup mm. to be able to have you transition very quickly from still right. uh, and video Absolutely. or back and forth. And uh, it was great to let you just do your thing. Once yeah. you knew you caught the video, mm -hmm. did you feel more comfortable going to the still and then making that I happen? I did, yeah. yes, absolutely. Going back and forth, it's just you wanna make sure you nail that shot. And uh, you know, this camera gave us so much opportunity to create so many amazing images. It was honestly hard to narrow down the shots to the final ones. Mm -hmm. Now I know you uh, going back a while, and I know the D850 was a huge part of yes. your, you know, photo bag mm -hmm. and the camera that you relied on probably every day. Right. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are thinking about this transition mm -hmm. to mirrorless. But not only do I want you to mention that, but how. It, in that same breath is what is it about Z8 and mirrorless that mm -hmm. makes the difference for you that you would have gone from the, the D850 to jump right into Z8? Yeah, I mean, I think with the Z8, now is the perfect time for people to switch over from DSLR to mirrorless. I mean, because this is gonna allow you to, to make even sharper, more dynamic images. It's gonna make you honestly a better photographer. You can't take a bad photograph with this camera. <laughs> I mean, with the eye autofocus, the color, the skin tones, I mean, 
If you make a bad photo with your camera, that's that's not a good sign. <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. no. Listen, we we all have our good days uh, and our do. bad days, we right? Do. And, we and do. a lot Very of times, true. you know, uh, I want to blame the camera, but I blame myself. And <laughs> yeah. you're right. I think the versatility of so all this good. between the focusing system, between mm -hmm. the high resolution, um, just how important yeah. is that for the commercial work you do mm -hmm. and the video work you do? Absolutely. I think. You know, I do so much commercial work and with every particular campaign that I photograph and shoot, there's so many things that everyone needs. If you think about social media, billboards, magazines, all these different things that you have to photograph. And, you know, it's, it's amazing to have a hybrid camera that you can go from shooting stills, getting all the stills that you needed from the wide angle to the close up. Uh, and then, sh you know, switching over to video, shooting horizontal, horizontal video, vertical video. You know, there's just so many things you need. And so you really have to have a hybrid camera like the Z8 in order to make that happen. Just from the sheer number of things that you have to create in camera. Anything else you can think of, you know, as we wind down, you know, that you would tell people about your experience with the yeah. Z8? Um, the new uh, electronic viewfinder is phenomenal. It has no blackouts, mm -hmm. and so it really enables you to photograph and not miss any moments. I think that's a big part of it. Uh, when working with, I shoot a lot of backlight, and working with this camera with, like, say, the 8512 or the 512, and you're shooting with the sun, you know basically facing the lens you don't get any kind of chromatic aberration I know that's your style striking. Right? You love that is my flare. style yep. absolutely so mm -hmm. that's really important to me and just the skin tones the color oh I love being able to you know the viewfinder how it comes out mm -hmm. um, I noticed you did that quite a bit on the shoot yeah the like video. a low angle yep. um, then I'll also does it vertically, so that's pretty huge. I've been using that a lot on set. Mm -hmm. um, it's really you talk helpful. talk about vertical video and still. Yes. So, yeah, that plays well. Thank you, Dixie, for giving us such great insight on the shoots that you have. It was so great working together with you again, and I, I sometimes this job is all about just the great people you work with and oh. the things you learn on set, and I just I love being uh, on set with you. It's a, it's a great experience for everything, so thank you oh, for all that. It was such an honor to have you there and work on this campaign. I mean, this was, this was a dream project, and uh, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity. Thank well, you. Thank you for everything you put into this, and uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, there's great content on Nikon's website and social, but uh, we wanted to close out by rolling the behind the scenes video. Let it go. Dixon. I'm a commercial fashion advertising photographer, film director, and Nikon ambassador based out of Dallas, Texas. When I picked up the Z8 from using the Z9 for about a year and a half, it was a seamless process. Everything was the same, the buttons were the same, and I think that really allowed me to just go in and create what I needed to. It's very challenging when you're having to shoot both stills and video in the same production, but I found that the Z8 really makes it pretty seamless. It's definitely a challenge mentally because you gotta think about moving images as opposed to just still images. It's a challenge that I'm definitely up for. Having a hybrid type of camera for this type of production is, it's everything. It's of most importance because when you're having to shoot stills and go from stills to immediately shooting video, 
Uh, this camera allows you to do so seamlessly. The body style, the ergonomics of this camera, smaller body style is really nice for video because you can throw it on a gimbal and get to work really quickly. And I really love the fact that you can also take high resolution stills from the actual video footage and they look exceptional. For this production, the Z8 was a game changer. I loved every minute of creating with this camera. Ready, action.